Hello everyone, welcome back to AeroHub and welcome to the series of lectures in aerospace structures. In the previous lecture we discussed about what you mean by a pure tension field beam or a Wagner beam and also we discussed about the construction of a pure tension field beam. And you are aware that a beam or a structure which can carry almost the entire load in terms of tension is called a pure tension field beam. And in this lecture, and this lecture is mainly concerned about the estimation of stress as well as load acting on a pure tension beam or a Wagner beam. And this lecture is divided into two parts because the process is really lengthy. And in part one, we will estimate the tensile stress acting on a 2D element acting a 2D element in a pure tension field beam as you can see in the figure we have a pure tension field beam and this is your top flange this is the bottom flange and we have vertical stiffness arranged throughout the beam and this vertical stiffness will provide the buckling strength for the beam and the flanges both upper flange and lower flange will be carrying the bending stress that is the combination of the compressive stress and tensile stress and this is the thin plate and the thickness of the thin plate is small letter T and this web plate or the thin plate will carry the shear load and you are aware that when I am, when I am subjecting to a load of capital W the beam will bend and the thin plate will be carrying the shear load in terms of tensile load that is it can carry most of the shear load in terms of tension and this is the direction of buckling of this thin plate and you can see this small uh, this uh, lines this lines is actually the tension it's showing the tension of the web plate okay so one of the important thing you have to understand while deriving the stress and load for the pure tension field beam you can see this is the pure shear state of a 2d element okay this 2d element is subjected to only shear stress and the equivalent of this pure shear straight shear state in terms of principal stress state principal stress means you will be having maximum sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 1 will be the tensile stress and sigma 2 will be the compressive stress and this is the equivalent 2d stress state in the case of principal stress state i repeat the pure shear stress state is equivalent to this principal stress state that is the 2d element is rotated at an angle of 45 degree and you can see sigma 1 it is a, it is nothing but a tensile load and sigma 2 it, which is nothing but a compressive load and in the previous lecture we have seen that a thin cable will be not having any stability when it is undergoing a compressive load and it will be stable under the tensile load okay similarly this thin web plate or thin plate structure is stable in the case of a tensile load and it is not stable in the case of compressive load that's why we can see a 2d element a b c d which is subjected to a tensile load sigma t you can see here this is the sigma t that is nothing but the tensile stress acting on the 2d element and this alpha is nothing but angle of diagonal tension okay this is the angle at which there is the distribution of the tensile load okay and uh, you have to understand the thickness is smaller than t let capital s be the shear load acting at any point on this beam okay it is nothing s is nothing but the shear load shear load acting at any portion of this beam okay so shear stress is nothing but shear force divided by the cross sectional area cross sectional area is nothing but the thickness times the length that is nothing but this width okay thickness times this width gives the cross sectional area so you will get the value of shear stress that is equal to s by 
t into d okay t is the thickness d is the width and to estimate the stress acting on this particular uh, pure tension field beam we need a 2d element same as here and i have drawn a vertical plane here from d to f d to this point this point is f and the direct stress acting on this plane fd vertical plane fd is sigma z and the shear stress acting on this plane fd is tau okay so this is the direction z and y okay and now we will go we will derive the equation for sigma t that is nothing but the tensile stress in terms of sigma z that is nothing but a direct stress acting on the vertical plane f d consider the equilibrium of this element f d c equilibrium of equilibrium of element equilibrium of element f d c and we will use the equation of static equilibrium that is summation of force along y direction should be equal to zero okay so i can write i have a force of i have a shear stress acting in y direction this is z direction and this one is y direction okay so tau is the shear stress the cross sectional area is fd that is a length into the thickness t okay fd into the thickness t gives the cross sectional area in multiplied by the stress gives the force so i can write tau into fd into thickness is equal to here this sigma t is acting at an angle alpha so i will use the vertical component okay that will be sigma t into the cross sectional area is cd and thickness is t so cd into t into sin alpha okay this gives the value for component of load acting in the y direction and from the figure i can take this angle as 90 degree so here i can take cos alpha is equal to what is cos alpha from the figure cos alpha will be equal to cd divided by fd so i can write cd is equal to fd cos alpha okay now i will substitute the value of cd in this equation so i will get tau into fd into thickness is equal to sigma t into in, in the case of cd i will write fd cos alpha into thickness is uh, cd is equal to fd cos alpha so fd cos alpha into thickness into sin alpha if you look this equation you can see i can cut the term fd thickness from both sides so i can get tau is equal to sigma t into cos alpha sin alpha okay so what is cos alpha sin alpha sin 2 alpha by 2 okay so i can write sigma t is equal to tau by cos alpha sin alpha okay and 2 sin alpha cos alpha is equal to sin 2 alpha so i'll multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 so i'll be getting sigma t is equal to 2 times the shear stress tau divided by sin 2 alpha i put this as equation number 2 and i'll put this as equation number 3 okay now 
we have from equation number 1 that is from equation number 1 tau is equal to s by thickness into d shear force divided by the cross sectional area okay so i let assume that we have applied a lot of w that s is equal to w so i can i can write tau is equal to w by td okay so i'll substitute the value of tau that is this is equation number 4 substitute equation number 4 in equation number 4 in 3 so sigma t is equal to 2 w td sin alpha equation number 5 okay now we will take the equilibrium along z direction that is summation of f z is equal to 0 okay when you take summation of f z is equal to 0 we have to you have to follow the same step summation of z direction is in this direction so sigma z into fd into t is equal to sigma t cd into sin cos alpha okay not sin alpha cos alpha so finally i'll be getting an equation sigma z is equal to sigma z is equal to w after simplifying i'll be getting an equation sigma z is equal to z is equal to w by t d tan alpha okay this is equation number 6 okay you can try out this uh, case because we are using the same procedure i am not going to derive each and every relations okay that is waste of my time as well as waste of your time you can try out some things so summation of f z is equal to 0 use the same equilibrium equations along z direction and you can get the equation sigma z sigma z is equal to w by td is equal into tan alpha okay so in next lecture we will we will derive we will find out the loads acting on the flanges as well as we will derive the relation for diagonal tension angle so that's all about this lecture thank you for listening take care